things are. Okay, so now we are in the middle of the stage, in front of the audience, with the decoration in the back. Okay, so the middle of the of the stage is the place for the main actor of the play. Always, okay. Who's the main actor of this play? Well, Salvador Dali is. Okay, Salvador Dali is here. Is actually buried in the middle of the stage, and everybody is stepping on him, even without not knowing it. All right, and uh, now uh, we'll continue the visit to the museum, actually seeing some paintings. So, uh, as I told you, 19, in the 1920s, Dali was trying many different styles. He was trying to find his own style. So he painted puntillism, as we can see here. Well, one of these paintings is Dali. The other, the other is by a French painter called Paul Signac. Okay, now a quick question. Which one is Dali's one? Left or right? Left. Left. Left well, one. Left one is Smiling Venus, 1921, Salvador Dali. The one on the right is Paul Signac, the Red Boy, 1895. He also painted Fauvism, Expressionism, okay? So we have a painting here by Dali, another painting by Henry, Henry Matisse. Which one is Dali, which one is Matisse? Left, again. Left. Left is Dali, right is Matisse. Yes, satirical composition. But you can see uh, uh, the inspiration in all these artists, okay? Well. We say that Dali inspired in this artist because if I painted this, they would say I am copying this, okay? But as it was painted by Dali, we say that he was inspiring in my case. Well, one of these paintings is Picasso, the other one is Dali. Right. Right, the right one is Dali, the left one is Picasso. The old guitarist by Pablo Picasso, and the one on the right. I'm always seeing my Salvador Dali. You see how similar they are. This is the blue face of Picasso. Also, one, one, another one is Picasso, another one is Dali. Left. Left Dali, right Picasso. Here we have the Arlequin of Picasso. On the left, the uh, Barcelona mannequin by Salvador Dali. Okay? So these are paintings by uh, from his youth, from the 1920s, when he is just uh, inspiring another artist, trying different styles before finding his own style that he finally found in surrealism. What is surrealism? Well, surrealism is express whatever comes into mind at the same moment. So express in all kind of artistic expressions, not only painting, but sculpting and writing and poetry, okay? So whatever comes to mind, the subconscious, the dream world, Okay? So that's why we have this, this weird uh, compositions, okay? like this woman-animal symbiosis. Okay? This is one of these earliest surrealist paintings. But his surrealist phase uh, lasted about 10 years, from 1929, when he was accepted in the surrealist circle, to 1939, when he was kicked out of the surrealist circle. So these paintings in the 1930s are Dali in his prime. Uh, unfortunately, most of them are scattered all over the world. So we don't really have much of many of these paintings in a, in a, in a museum in Tingueras. Uh, one of the only paintings from this time we have here is the Spectre of Sex Bill from 1934. You recognize this door, these this rocks in the back? That's clearly Port Ligat. That's clearly the landscape that he sees from the window of his studio. The little boy here on the right, that's him dressed as a sailor, seeing this sex appeal, this monster of sex, he was terrified of sex, this monster of sex that's reborn, held with crutches from the earth. But here is Dali, his prime, that's very smooth colors. I mean, you really have to see the original one. Uh, to see it perfectly. But it's not a big painting, it's very small. In fact, we also have this one in the museum, Portrait of Gala with two lamp chops balanced on her shoulder. Well, that's actually very tiny, 
little painting. I don't know if you are looking at it in a, in a regular PC. That's how big, that's actually how big the painting is. Okay, it's eight centimeters per, uh, per six centimeters. Very, very small painting. In 1938, we have the Imperial Violets. That's a very nice painting. That's a very important painting in the museum. Uh, well, uh, you see, it's very different than what Dali has, uh, has us used to. Because this is not colorful painting. This is a very dark painting, very dark, cloudy skies, uh, lonely beach with three dead sardines representing uh, uh, death. I mean, this, again, this is the beach of Portigat in, in front of his house. So that's death in Portigat in 1938. Well, the Spanish Civil War was taking place at the moment. In the middle, we have this black telephone on a plate. Well, uh, you see before, uh, cell phones existed. Uh, young people don't know it now, but telephones were plugged into a wall with a cable, with a cord. But this black telephone in, in the painting, well, it has no cable, it has no cord. So uh, it is useless. You can't speak with this, with this, with this uh, telephone. You can't communicate with it. So that's the symbology in the, in the painting. That's the lack of communication within the major part of, this, of the wall that led to death, led to war. This is a prediction of World War II by Salvador Dali, one year before uh, uh, World War II began. In Dali, you also have to look uh, on the second images. Okay? You, there, are always, there are always two images in the painting. That's the image disappears. There are two images here. You see the two images? What do you see here? Face of a man Face or, of a or a woman. Velasquez. And a woman? Well, Velasquez. okay, so the face of the man is Velasquez. That's a portrait of Velasquez, one of his favorite faces. So you see the mustache, the bird, the hair. But then we have a woman reading a letter that's uh, inspired by the woman reading a letter of Vermeer. Uh, who was also one of his favorite painters. So again, this is Dali inspiring many other uh, painters and applying all this into his art. We can also see Poetry of America. That's a beautiful painting. That's one of the most important paintings in the museum. Well, he painted it in 1943 when he was living in the United States. So that's what we see here. We see a desert, American desert. Uh, could be Arizona, for example, when Dali uh, went to live in the United States he was shot by the American dancer. But uh, again, a landscape in the back, the mountains in the back, these are the Pyrenees. Okay, this is the landscape of the Even if, when he was away from his land, he always remembered his land. In the middle of the painting, we have a temple with a clock in the middle. Clocks always represent the uh, unstoppable pass of time. From the clock, it hangs the skin of Africa. See Africa here in the middle. And the two main characters in the painting are two American football players, a white football player and a black football player. The black football player ha has cotton instead of arms, with all the meaning that cotton has for African Americans going back to slavery. The most important detail in the painting, though, is this one. The bottle of Coca-Cola hanging from the black football player. Well, this uh, is uh, said to be the beginning of pop art, 20 years before Andy Warhol. In fact, Andy Warhol himself said that he was inspired uh, in this painting by Bob. The, well, the bottle of Coca-Cola turns into a black telephone that then turns into a drop of black liquid that falls on a white cloth that's black on white. Uh, painting poetry of America also has always been said to represent, to denounce segregation, racial problem in the United States. Keep moving. Basket of Bread. That's one of the most famous paintings by Dali. That's when he was a big part of the Surrealist movement, uh, movement, the Surrealist Circle. He says that he wants to go back to the classic art, 
to the Renaissance, Italian Renaissance painters. So uh, themes change. He begins doing these hyper-realistic paintings, and also the technique changes a little bit. That's when he creates this mystical nuclear phase. Uh, themes go from mythology to religion, to mysticism, and also science. He begins applying science into art. Most importantly, after 1945, after the explosions of the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, he's shocked by this, uh, by this, and that's when he began uh, being really, really interested in science. He painted the basket of bread. He was asked a lot of time, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of times, he was asked about the meaning of this painting, and he never tell, he never told. He said that well, he, this would be the final enigma. But this is a, uh, a bread inside a basket at the edge of a table with a black bag. Actually, this painting was used uh, when, after the publishing, it was used to uh, announce for the marketing, for announcing the Marshall Plan reconstruction in Europe after World War II. That was the image of the Marshall Plan. And next to the basket of bread, we have the Galarina. That's a, also a realistic portrait of Gala. That Dali said that this was also his favorite basket of bread. The arms, the shape of the arms of Gala are the basket. The naked breast of Gala is the bread. You see, this is a very realistic uh, portrait, very classic portrait of the muse, of the model. With the naked breast, with the piece of jewelry, the muse looking at you, okay? Plus also according to his memoir, inspired by Rafael Sanzio, Rafael's muse Fornarina, okay? He said that as Rafael had his muse Fornarina, he also had his muse Galarina, okay? He changed the, the name of Gala a little bit to uh, homage uh, Rafael here. And the Atomic Leader, that's for me the most important painting in, uh, in, uh, in the museum, okay? Uh, that tells the Greek myth of Lida and the swan. What's important in this painting is that uh, science is applied in this painting. You see this is a sketch of the painting, and you can see all the proportions are calculated in maths. You see a mathematic formula here. And most importantly, it's like there's no gravity in this painting. It looks like Lida Gala is sitting on a throne. Well, she's not sitting on the throne. Look closely, she's not sitting. She's not touching anything. In fact, no object is touching any other object. They are all floating over the other ones. Even the water is floating over the, the sand. This is Gala Placidia or Galatea of the Spheres. That's a portrait of Gala made with spheres. Again, science into art. Uh, Dali, well, uh, at first, they, th they thought that the, the smallest thing there was was the atom. Uh, but then somebody split the atom and they say, they saw that there was a bunch of stuff going on inside the atom, all the subatomic particles, the electrons, the neutrons, the protons, all moving around and bouncing. That's what you see here. That's gala is the atom, it's the whole. But then you can decompose gala in subatomic particles that go to the end. That painting, Gala Placidia, that Galarina, is located in a special room in the museum that's called the Palace of the Wind. It's called the Palace of the Wind because this is the room where he made his first exhibition at the age of 14. So this was a very important room for him. So that's why he decided to decorate this room wonderfully with this amazing thing in the cinema. Again, you have to look closely, go to the museum and spend several minutes looking at this painting to see all his new universe, from the crutches to him, see the mustache. You see that's very similar than the one we saw in Gala's castle with this dome open that you can see from heaven tree. And well, you can see other, other details like, well, the soft clocks, the elephants with with insect legs, okay? All his universe is painted in this amazing painting in the Palace of the Wind. Okay, well, nearly done. You just see a couple of more paintings. That's a very famous one. 
That's Gala Nude looking at the sea, which at 18 meters appears the President Lincoln. That's actually a spoiler in your title. You see Gala naked, seen from behind on a balcony looking at the sea. Well, now you just stand up, walk 18 meters far, and look at the same painting. Have you done it? Well, no, I'm going to do it for you, okay? Just zoom, 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 zoom out. And here you can see a hyper-pixelated portrait of President Lincoln. An optical effect, mm -hmm. second images. That's how genius Dali was. Well, some of the last paintings in his life in the 1980s, I told you, Gala died in 1982. He nearly stopped painting. We have this geological eco, the piety of Michelangelo, Hotel of Dreaming Venice, or the last painting he ever painted, Solo Stella and Cello. That's the one he finished while living in Portugal. Salvador Dali passed away in 1989 and he was buried in the uh, museum. <laughs> Well, actually, we, we still can see that he's alive because, well, more than 1.3 million people visit his museum each year, step on his grave. He will have lost that. And that's everything for me. Okay, well, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the tour. If you've got any questions, I'm glad to answer any doubts or any questions you might have.